Walt Disney presents... From Frontierland, the Swamp Fox, brother against brother. Starring Leslie Nielsen. Any house that celebrates a British victory deserves to burn. Right, men? That's right. right. And that goes for your lady friend's place, too. She's just as guilty as all the rest. Mary Bedeau can't help what her parents do. I'm telling you, Mary Bedeau's no better than any other trollop that holds hands with the red coat. You know, sometimes there are strange gaps in history. When we began to prepare our stories about the Swamp Fox, we discovered that very few definitive books had been written about the life and times of Francis Marion. Generally, our historians have almost overlooked the audacious exploits of the Swamp Fox and his men. Yet it was the hit and run raids of these hard riding, hard fighting men that bought the precious time needed for General Washington to prepare for the final victorious battle at Yorktown. The Swamp Fox's men were not trained soldiers. They were citizens, patriots from farms and villages, fighting for a cause they believed. They seldom had enough food or ammunition, and the closest they came to a uniform was a feathered or fox-tailed hat, like this, that they wore for identification. The Swamp Fox himself often improvised his own military strategy. Perhaps that's why he had the daring to plan and carry off raids that the enemy who fought by the book thought impossible. In fact, many of the guerrilla tactics used by the commandos in the last war were originated by Marion and his men in the Carolina swamps. Actually, the Swamp Fox and his men had to fight two enemies, the Redcoats and their Tory supporters. For not all American colonists favored the revolution and there was a sharp division of allegiance, a division that often saw brother fighting against brother. Our program deals with this conflict of friend against friend and brother against brother. Its title, Brother Against Brother. This is where we part ways, Colonel. But God blimey, I'll be waiting for word to join your guide. When the sky over Snow Island is filled with birds, Sergeant Jasper, that's a signal to come. Yes, sir. Off the road, quickly. Tom's Dragoons. See, they take the right road, Sergeant. Noble sons of the mother country, may I be of assistance? Do you know if a column for His Majesty's troops has moved along any of these roads? Yes, sir. The Savannah Road, sir. If you'll hurry along, you'll overtake them. Do you see any American rebels that Swamp Fox Marion? No, sir, but if I saw that rebel, I'd tell him a thing or two I would. <laughs> Ungrateful, that's what he is. After all the Crown has done for us colonists. Order to gallop! Ho! Oh! <laughs> good performance, Sergeant. Too good. I don't know whether to trust him or not. When Tom finds out what's happened, he's going to be turning the state of Carolina upside down looking for us. <laughs> Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye, sir. Bye, Major. Take care, sir, Sergeant. What on earth is the meaning of this, Captain? I beg to report, sir. I was overtaken by a superior number of the enemy under the man you call the Swamp Fox, sir. He disrobed us, sir. I mean, he disarmed us, sir, and said to give General Cornwallis this message. He said that as long as there was a free man in Carolina, that the war would continue until the enemy... 
meaning us, sir, was driven from their shore, sir. Then no free men must be left in Carolina, Captain. Catch the swamp fox, and the flame of the rebellion will be extinguished. Toes about! Ho! Well, what about us, sir? What shall I do? Go find yourself a donkey's tail, Captain. You earned it! That's Seton Briggs' place. Yes, could be some toys at work. Let's see if we can give them a surprise. Ah! Ah! Get that wagon over there and block those doors! Oh, no, you can't do that to it! Oh, let me go! Let me go! Oh, let me go! <laughs> oh, Amos, please! For mercy's sake, he's your own brother! Just giving him a little rebel treatment, honey. Maybe if he gets enough smoke in his eyes, he'll start seeing things our way. Joe! Shinny down there and give him a hand with that wagon! Barnes a goner, isn't she? Yes, I'm afraid so, Seaton. Your brother Amos did this to you, didn't he? Yes. Well, why? Because... Because my husband is loyal to you, Colonel Marion. What you're fighting for. I don't understand. Brothers. Amos Briggs wouldn't let blood relationships stand in his way. Not if he stood to profit by it. It's this way all over the parish, Colonel. Brother against brother, father against son, neighbor against neighbor. Even you, you've done so much for all of us. They didn't spare you either. You mean they burned our place? Who did it? I think it was my brother and his Tory friends. They burned everything in sight. Oh, no, not everything. Not the Sutton place. And not the Vido Mance, and I think you know why, Colonel. Christine. Not after all the Colonel's done for us. Let's head for home. Now, just a minute, Gabe. Mrs. Briggs, you were saying why they didn't burn the Bedeau house. Because Mary Bedeau and her folks are Tories, that's why. Folks can't understand you, Colonel. You, an American army officer about to marry a redcoat sympathizer. Let's go. I'll get the horses. Mrs. Briggs, there's only one thing you said about Mary that's true. I am going to marry her. Peter, stay here and give Briggs a hand with the burying. Gladly, Fred. I'll enjoy patting a couple of Tories in the face with a shovel. Come by the place in the morning. We may have to strike sooner than I planned. I'll be there. Ah. It's Uncle Fran and Gabriel. How'd it go, Uncle Fran? You licked him good, I hope. Yeah. We licked him good, young Gabe. It wasn't me they were after, Fran. It was you. You have done so much and fought their battles. Keep. Gabe, are you all right? Yes, dear, I'm all right. When did this happen? Last night, after dark. They'd have burned the barn, too, if young Gabe and Oscar hadn't stood him off. Francis, now you can see why I want my husband at home. It isn't the redcoats we're afraid of. It's Tory devils like Amos Briggs and Toby Sutton. Kathy's right, Fran. 
Our war is right here in St. John's Parish. There's only one way to deal with Tories. A barn for a barn, a house for a house, and a life for a life, if necessary. Follow him, young Gabe. He may cool off, but if he doesn't, you let me know what he's up to. A cabin's hearth with stones so warm and dry. Heaven is a mammy's arms where little children cry. Heaven is a heap of straw, a body called a bed. Heaven is a pillow where a tired soul lays his head. Heaven is a candy stick so full of joy and bliss. Heaven is the happiness that comes when lovers kiss. Uncle Gabe's with the Patriots. They're on the King's Road, marching to burn the Vido place. All right, get down, young Gabe. No use talking, Fran. Our mind's set. Now is the time to talk, Gabe, before you do something you'll be ashamed of for the rest of your life. Don't try to interfere, Fran. You have no right. That's just it. I do have the right. Carter, Ellen Shaw, Phelps, Winburn, you're all members of my military militia. You're sworn to obey orders. As your commanding officer, I'm giving you an order. Now get home and forget about burning Tory houses. Well, I ain't one of your stinking militia colonels, so I say what I like. Any house that celebrates a British victory deserves to burn. Right, men? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that goes for your lady friend's place, too. She's just as guilty as all the rest. Mary Vidot can't help what her parents do. <laughs> she can if she wants to. I'm telling you, Mary Vidot's no better than any other trollop that holds hands with the red coat. Oh, 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 get away with that. Man. He shouldn't have called Mary names, but what he said is true. Right now, our house is full of Tories and redcoats. Come on, men. He's only trying to protect his lady friend. Come on! Come on! Hey, stand where you are! Mary Vado is not the reason I don't want you burning Tory houses. The enemy does that. And because of it, he'll lose the war. Don't you men understand? We're neighbors here. Our lands join. The battles we fight, they'll be forgotten someday. But you burn a man's house down from over his wife and children, he'll never forget that. He'll remember and he'll hate you till his dying day. Now you let me do this. You wait here. I'll go and get Mary. I'll bring her back and you can decide for yourselves if she's a Tory. Mm -hmm. oh, we know she's a Tory. Shut up! Shut up! 
You've been yelling that every man had the right to speak for himself. I think the colonel should have that right, too. Go ahead, friend. Bring her back. I'll try to hold them here. Colonel Todd, you'll be turning my poor little head with such flattery. I'd really like to, you know, as long as it turns in my direction, of course. Honestly, the party will be a complete bore if you don't come. And how will you know if you're not there? Why did you say that? Oh, I seem to recollect hearing Major Stockley saying you were going somewhere or other. Could it be you're going after that awful swamp box? I hear you've sworn to catch it. Yes, that I have, but not on this trip, I'm afraid. No, I'm going up to Turkey Lake on Tuesday to pick up some American prisoners. Uh, all goes well. I shall be back by Saturday. May I look forward to the first dance with you? Toby! Who's that, Toby? Oh, Mr. Marion, you shouldn't be here, sir. It's awful dangerous. Never mind about that. I want to talk to Miss Mary, tell her I'll be in the garden, and don't let anybody overhear you. Oh, don't you worry about it, Toby, sir. I'd sprinkle red poison over this old hand before I'd give it to them redcoats. All right. Now, uh, what are we waiting for? The Colonel's not going to bring her back. Probably helping her to clear out. Yeah, let's have a celebration of our own. Come hold on, it, hold it, hold it. Yeah. We promised to wait. My brother's no liar. We'll find out. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> Friend, you shouldn't be here. Oh, but I'm so glad to see you. Why is it I... I always have a feeling each kiss will be the last. Is it because we're always saying goodbye? Or is it because I never see you except like this? A few moments in the dark away from prying eyes. You didn't seem to be worrying about prying eyes when you were in there dancing with Tarleton. I rather got the impression you were enjoying it, Mary. That isn't what I mean. What do you mean, Mary? In times like these, the difference between life and death can hang on a single word, the smallest gesture. And yet I come here tonight and find your house filled with redcoats and Tories. Why? Are you accusing me, Fran, or asking me? It is a little difficult seeing you in there enjoying yourself with the enemy. You can understand that, can't you? I'm not sure that I do. Mary, I stopped a mob tonight intent on burning your place. And it was exactly this that set them marching. I told them when I was talking, it wasn't just to protect someone I, I loved. I'm not so sure I was telling the truth, Mary. Maybe they're right. Maybe I was trying to protect you. If that's the case, then I'm wrong. Poor darling. I put you in a terrible position, haven't I? And that isn't what I wanted at all. What do you want, Mary? Nothing but the chance to help you, Fran. You've got to believe that. Help me how? By stuffing your ears with English flattery? By gathering information for the Redcoats and Tories. That's how, by learning their plans. Is this the reason why that house is filled with Redcoats tonight? Over a crazy idea like that? Oh, it isn't crazy. It's crazy and dangerous. It makes you nothing less than a, than a spy. I can't let you take that risk. But I already have. And I intend to keep on as long as the war lasts. Mary, this is not Fran, a job. we're in this together. 
together, huh? All right, Mary. Together, then. Now, I want you to come with me. I promised the men I'd bring you back. But I have wonderful news about Cornwallis's plans. No, don't tell it to me now. I want you to tell it to the men directly. Come on, we'll take that buggy there. Let's go back, Fran. Too late for that now. Someone has to warn mother and father. Now, just stand your ground, Mary. Well, it took you long enough, Colonel. What'd you do, stop for a cup of tea with the Redcoats? Maybe you had a couple of dances with Miss Vidal. Be quiet, let them talk. Let's stop for tea. I didn't even stay long enough to hear what Mary had to say. I wanted you to hear it from her and not from me. All right, Mary, go ahead. I know how you all feel toward me. And you're wrong. I'm as much an American as any of you. Perhaps more. I wouldn't burn a neighbor's house no matter how much I hated him. See how you feel after we burn your house. Let her talk. What about your folks? I'm not here to speak about my parents. They're Tories, you all know that. If it will give you satisfaction to burn their house, go ahead. But if you do, I'll lose the only chance I have of helping your colonel. You mean that, Mary? Yes. Let the house stand. The Redcoats will come there, and I can learn of their plans as I have tonight. I'll gather information that will help you. Is that true, Fran? How do we know? Well, you'll just have to take her word for it, Gabe, like I do. What'd you learn, Mary? Cotton and indigo keep the English mills going. So Cornwallis is determined to hold on to Carolina at any cost. Plans to build a string of holding ports. Clear across the state. Good, good. That means he'll have to split up his striking force. That isn't all I learned. During the minuet with Colonel Tarleton, I learned that he is going to Turkey Lake with a small force to pick up some American prisoners, which will be turned over to him there. Do you know when he intends to pick these prisoners up? Tuesday. He has to be back in Charleston by Saturday to keep a date with me. <coughs> All right, men, you've all heard the lady. Any objections if I take her home now? If there are, they'll have to whip me first. I think we owe the lady an apology and a vote of thanks. What do you say? Three cheers for Mary. That's yeah. right. Hip, 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 hooray! Hip, 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 hip hooray! Hip, 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 hooray! hooray! What's the matter, Peter? Uh, doesn't this road lead to Cusack's place? That's right, and he's a Tory, so if you're thinking of buying anything... Now, hold on, Colonel. Why would you want to buy something you can get for nothing? Peter, I wish you'd look at me when you speak. I can never tell what you're thinking. <laughs> well, it's like this, sir. I think with the sergeant here doing most of the talking, maybe we just pass for a bunch of honest-to-goodness Tories. <laughs> well, we'll probably end up in front of the firing squad, but we do need lead and powder. Listen, you two, we're Tories now. So whenever they mention the king, you stand at attention. Well, what's your pleasure, sir? Go and egg a mutton and a spot of ale, friend. And will these gentlemen be having the same? Or that they will. Nelly. Uh, we're on our way to join a band of loyal Americans, training to fight for the king. May the good Lord preserve him. We've no time to waste. Your loyal subjects of the crown, I've no doubt of it now. You know, I said to myself the very moment I heard your voices, I said to myself, now they can call Mutton and a loaf for these gentlemen. I said to myself, these gentlemen are newly arrived from the old country. That's plain to be seen. <laughs> That's Devonshire mud on that boot. Can't you smell it? 
affair makes me homesick, it does. <laughs> Gentlemen, the king. The king. And why not the queen? No offence, my dear. Uh, gentlemen, the queen. The queen. <clears throat> These uh, Tories that are training to fight for the king. <clears throat> and the crown. Uh, you wouldn't know where they'd be at, would you? Why, of course. That it depends. Uh, that's Colonel Alston's place right up the road. I was just about to take a load of powder and lead there right now. I could show you the way. I say, old chap, uh, why don't we save you the trouble and take it with us, hmm? Hmm. Splendid idea. Our pack animals are just outside. Load them up like a good chap. <laughs> Gentlemen, there's the small question of money involved. <laughs> oh, but of course, old boy. <laughs> Name your own price. You have money? Plenty. And what I don't have, he has. Hmm. Very good. I'll load them up right away. Uh, Nelly, cigars for the gentlemen. Give them anything they want. Excuse me, gentlemen. How long have you two been serving the cause? Uh, what cause are you referring to, mister? Why, the king's cause, of course. Oh, uh, that cause. How long have you supposed we've been serving these fine gentlemen, young Gabe? Uh, not long. Wait a moment. If loyal subjects of his majesty are foreigners, then what are you two? American, sir, and mighty proud of it. Uh, I think we better get to work. They'll be coming out soon. You know, I got a feeling that troubles are brewing. And we brewed it. Here, yeah, Vasco and young Gabe. All right, gentlemen. I'd like to see the color of your money, if you don't mind. Of course. How much would you like? Continental money. Not worth the paper it's printed on. Those so ads. That fox tail. I might have known your Marion's men. Meet the swamp fox himself. It's a pleasure, indeed. If you like, I'll uh, sign a voucher for your redeemable and silver, which you can present to our Congress. <laughs> You'll not get one ounce of that powder. You hold out your hand, you thief and Tory skunk. I'll be glad you still got it. That money is going to be good one of these days if you live long enough. You mark my words. Tell me, Sergeant. Just what does that Devonshire mud smell like? I don't know. I've never been there. This mud comes from the Colonel's barnyard. Young Gabe, come over here. Here. Go stew the birds up with this. It's time for the men to come in. On the devil now. with an empty gun only makes us shout the louder we are men of marion swamp fox swamp fox tail on his hat no one knows where the swamp fox at swamp fox swamp fox hiding in the glen he runs away to fight again got no blankets got no bed got no roof above my head got no shelter when it rains all we got is Yankee brains. Swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox at. Swamp fox, swamp fox, hiding in the glen. He runs away to fight again. Got no corn pone, got no honey. All we got is continental money. 
Won't buy bacon, hominy, or grits. Rolls and ears and possum is all we ever get. Swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox at. Swamp fox, swamp fox, I'm in the bend. He runs away to fight again. We can't wait any longer. Everyone have nine rounds of shot and powder? Yes, sir. Thank you. For the first time we got more ammunition we need, Colonel. Because we don't have enough men. Well, those that aren't butchering to keep their meat from the Tories are most likely haying. That's true, Peter. The men do have to look after their farms and families. But we're fighting a war, too. Well, we'll just be short-handed. I have to find a way of balancing the odds between here and Turkey Lake. That's all. Mount up. Oh, Oscar. Yes, sir. I want you to come along, too, to look after the packs of extra shot and powder. Yes, sir. Not you, young Gabe. Oh, gee, Uncle Fran, why can't I go too? I've got something more important for you to do. This is a report to General Gates. I want you to memorize it and then destroy it. Now, Gates is up somewhere around Camden, I believe. Now, if you can't get through, you go home. You understand, soldier? Yes, but... I don't take any unnecessary chances, lad. Don't want to lose my favorite nephew. If you see Mary, tell her that, uh... Tell her I'm, uh, just tell her to be careful, will you? A red coat cavalry just off the road about a mile ahead, sir. Just starting to break camp. <laughs> I would have captured them single-handed, sir, but it occurred to me, well, you might not approve of me risking my very valuable life so recklessly, seeing as how it's government property, so to speak. Well, I'm very glad to see you're so considerate, Sergeant, of government property, that is. Peter, I want those uniforms. This is a way of reducing the odds. No bullet holes in them, no saber cuts. Do you hear that, man? Take the red coats, but don't spoil our pretty uniforms. Would you like me to show the way, sir? Well, that's awfully kind of you, Sergeant. Oh, not at all, sir. Ho! The militia scout I reported seeing, sir, is returning through the woods with a small company of mounted men. Oh, very good, Chalmers. We'll turn our backs on them to make sure that the blighters don't have a change of heart. Finish your breakfast, gentlemen. kill anybody, so just drop your guns and sabers. I have no qualms about killing you, Rebel. So look over your shoulder and drop your weapons before I drop this handkerchief. Maybe you better take another look, Captain. Swamp Fox. Captain, it's the quickest promotion I ever got. Aye, and don't forget the rum ration I'm entitled to as an officer in His Majesty's service. <laughs> All right, Sergeant. Uh, excuse me, Captain. If you're ready, will you proceed as directed? Yes, sir. Mount up! All right, Sergeant Jasper. Forward! Column forward!
Right, old chap. That's Turkey Lake ahead, and a good scrub down for both of us. the men. Column! Rest! Lieutenant Peters? Yes, sir. Water the horses. Then look to the men and prisoners. Right, sir. Ah, that water does look... Beastly lot, aren't they? get through this meeting, we have a chance to pull it off. But if they don't, Peter, be prepared to move out. I shall be glad to get these quarrelsome fellows off our hands, Mirko. Well, it won't be long, sir. Here comes the relief column. Captain Wyndham Chattersey of the 4th Regiment, sir. To whom do I have the pleasure of reporting? Captain Johns, 2nd Cavalry, Lieutenant Smarkont, and Chesbro. My aide, Lieutenant Wildebrand. I have orders to relieve you of your prisoners. I'm jolly well glad I shall be to hand them over. Although I must say you do seem a little under man. Oh, uh, don't worry about us, Captain. We're hand-picked men, special for this job. We'll pull it off, all righty. What he means is we've been specially trained in how to handle prisoners. And if I do say it myself, sir, we do a thorough job of it. So with your permission, we'll take them and start back right away. I strongly advise you not to, Captain. They're a quarrelsome lot. Over half escaped before we could get them chained. Ah, you won't even get them on their feet until they're fed. Well, I'd like to try, sir. You see, my lieutenant is very persuasive with prisoners. Well, at least you'll wash the dust from your throats first. Aye, uh, that we will, sir. If we only had time. You see, there's so little daylight left, I think we'd better start now. Thank you, gentlemen, and good day. Well, that's a disagreeable task off our hands. Let's have that drink. What do you think, Peter? Well, there's no sign of trouble yet. I spoke too soon. Guard, we'll take over. Hold it, Scotch. Look alive, everybody. This may mean trouble. Captain Wyndham Chattersey, sir? Yes, sir? I must ask you to remain here. May I ask why we must remain here, sir? I've just received word that the rebel outlaw, known as the Swamp Fox, has been seen maneuvering in this area. I can't let you go on. If that's all, sir, I'll risk it. The prisoners have not officially left my charge, Captain, so I must overrule you. Remain here tonight, and I'll proceed with you to Charleston in the morning. Very good, sir. Dismount, men. Make camp, gentlemen. We'll place our backs to the lake and roll the supply carts between us and the woods. Oh, and Mercant. Yes, sir. Place the pickets well out. I want plenty of warning. We must get word to Marion. Lieutenant! My men are still fresh. I'll have them stand picket duty if you like. Very good, Captain. Thanks for the help. Pickford, Babcock, Chase, Webb, Jenkins, you're to stand picket duty. MacDonald, you're to station them as far out as possible. Understand? Aye. They'll be so far out it'll take a rescue squad to find them. Drummer! They're making camp. Let's take a closer look. Detail. Halt! Jenkins, fall out. Column right. March!
They found out the swamp box was working in this area and they wouldn't let us leave. They're going to Charleston with us in the morning. Then we have to take the prisoners. Yes, sir. Jasper will throw a burning brand in the air when he's ready. How about those other pickets? All ours, sir. Good. All right, let's get going. Dismissed. All set. Does everyone know what to do? Good. Take your positions. position and wait till you hear my signal. Here come the reinforcements. How many want me to sound like, Colonel? About 200. Ought to do the trick. Yes, sir. Come on, let's get out of here. Peter, pass the word along to the men. Fire the first volley over their heads, give them a chance to surrender. Then race to the opposite flank to reload. Don't fire twice from the same spot. Yes, sir. This is my answer. Fire! I looked at the cavalry, sir. Direct fire and volleys. Fire! Down at the smoke!
Hordes are full of the enemy! Where's my cavalry? Where have they gone? They've run away, sir. They've deserted you. We're hopelessly outnumbered, Captain. Put up the flag. Bugler, sound the ceasefire. Trickery is all we have to fight with, Captain. Your sword, please. Now I know why they call you the Swamp Fox. Thank you, Captain. Got no blankets, got no beds, got no roof up on our heads, got no shelter when it rains, all we got is Yankee brains. Swamp Fox, Swamp Fox, tail on his hat, nobody knows where the Swamp Fox at. Swamp Fox, Swamp Fox, hiding in the glen, he runs away to fight again. Swamp Fox, Swamp Fox, tail on his hat, nobody knows where the Swamp Fox at. Swamp Fox, Swamp Fox, hiding in the glen, he runs away to fight again. He returns to the law of the six gun. You wouldn't dare use that gun. I have a notorious reputation for being impatient. Now stand behind him, unbuckle his gun belt and drop it to the floor. He faces a showdown. Baca! What are you leaving for, Baca? If it's blood you came to smell, there's plenty of it here and more to flow if my son dies. Just two weeks from now, Walt Disney presents Move Along Mustangers, another exciting chapter from the living legend El Fago Baca. Anybody else want some? And now to your host, Walt Disney, to tell you about next week's program. Many people have an idea that movie stars, directors, and cameramen have a pretty easy life in their jobs of creating motion pictures. Next week in our program, Perilous Assignment, we're going to show you they're sometimes engaged in the world's most hazardous occupation. Recently, we dispatched an entire motion picture company to the Alpine village of Zermatt. In our cast were James MacArthur, Michael Rennie, Janet Munro, James Donald, and many others. Here, they were to film a screenplay at the top of the mighty Matterhorn, the Killer Mountain. It was to be the most dangerous camera location we had ever attempted. As our stars started out on their way up the mountain, they little realized they were embarking on the most perilous assignment of their lives. Perilous assignment. Every magnificent scene, every dramatic moment is real, untouched by any fiction. This is exactly as it happened in real life. You'll relive an adventure never before filmed. You'll accompany an entire motion picture company, its stars, its crews and their equipment, as they inch their way to the top of the mighty Matterhorn to the most hazardous camera location ever attempted. You'll share in the dangers they face, the sheer walls of rock to be scaled, where one moment of carelessness could prove to be fatal. You'll be awed by the fury of nature's outrage at man's trespassing upon her forbidden domain. Crumbling rock, spectacular thunderstorms, icy glaciers, howling winds, yawning crevasses, thunderous avalanches, all this to peril the lives of the stars and the crews. This is the Matterhorn, the killer mountain, hurling its wrath, its defiance upon the intruders. Here is dramatic entertainment you never thought could happen. See it, thrill to it, in all its stark realism next week when Walt Disney presents Perilous Assignment. Ooh.
on the mountain? And why is he there? Walt Disney reveals the exciting answer and takes you along to high adventure in Third Man on the Mountain. Don't move! See Michael Rennie, James MacArthur, and Janet Monroe in Third Man on the Mountain, coming soon to a theater near you. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.